This is the craziest antenna setup I've ever seen in an FPV drone. Today we're going to be building this 5 inch FPV drone using the latest parts from GEP RC. You may know GEP RC from their pre built CineWhoops like the CineLog 35 or the CineBot 30, but they also make a lot of parts for us DIY drone builders. Today I have their new budget motors, flight stack, high power VTX, and most interestingly, their new dual band Gemini receiver. Big shout out to GEPRC for sending over these parts for this build. These are GEPRC's new SpeedX motors. These cost just $15 each, but they still have some pretty nice features like being double machine for some extra bling. And really interestingly, these are dynamically balanced from the factory. If you take a look inside the motor just above the magnets, you can see little spots of black epoxy. Similar to how lead weights are used to balance a car tire, FPV motors can be balanced with epoxy to make sure they spin smoothly and evenly. This process is usually only for higher end motors, so it's nice to see it on these budget friendly $15 motors. This flight stack is the GEPRC Taker F405, which is a budget friendly option at under $60. It also has some great features like built-in black box storage for tuning and connectors for all of the peripherals. So if you're not a fan of soldering tiny little wires, well you're in luck as the camera, VTX, and receiver all plug in directly, no soldering required. For the VTX, this is their Maten 2.5 watt video transmitter. This is the one Chris Rosser reviewed to have an insane power output well beyond the rated 2.5 watts, and it's made of all machined aluminum and has a cooling fan to keep the temperatures down. And finally is their new dual band Gemini receiver, which is a really cool piece of tech and it really shows where Express LRS technology is headed in the future. So first this receiver has Gemini capability, which means that the two antennas on the receiver can act independently and communicate with two separate antennas on a Gemini transmitter. And the second standout feature is that this is a dual band receiver, so it can work in both the 900 megahertz band as well as the 2.4 gigahertz band at the exact same time. One antenna will work on 900 and the other will work on 2.4. And the antennas that are included with this receiver are also dual band, so you don't have to worry about swapping antennas or trying to figure out which antenna is which both antennas will just work with everything. So overall these dual band and Gemini features means that this is going to be the most solid and most reliable Express LRS link yet and if you're like me and you don't actually have a Gemini transmitter yet then no worries this is still completely backwards compatible with normal Express LRS transmitters which is what I'm using. I'm using a RadioMaster Pocket. Also, GEPRC knows that it's going to be hard to find a dual band Gemini capable Express LRS transmitter right now. So they actually have custom firmware for this receiver that actually turns it into a transmitter. And soon they're going to sell a physical module box for it. So you can buy two of these receivers and you can turn one of them into the transmitter and stick it in the module box. That's pretty cool and that's what I'm planning on doing. To finish up the frame, I'm using the SpeedyB Mario 5 frame and the Cadex Rattel 2 analog camera. The first step of the build is to put the Mario 5 frame together. I recommend grabbing a pair of tweezers since the first step of the build requires aligning four different carbon plates together. Besides that, the Mario 5 frame is a breeze to assemble. This frame comes in two different versions, an XH and a DC version. I have the DC or dead cat version here. To help figure out wiring, it's time to do a dry fit of all the components on the frame. Screw everything onto the frame as a mock-up and don't solder or cut any wires yet. This will help us plan exactly where every component and wire will go. Everything fit together perfectly, except for the capacitor. The capacitor that comes with the Taker F405 is an absolute unit, which is good for performance, but it's too big for the SpeedyB Mario 5 frame. I opted to take a capacitor from one of my spare SpeedyB stacks instead. If you want to replicate this build, make sure you get a smaller capacitor that'll fit in the Mario 5. Bend the capacitor leads in place under the ESC. The Mario 5 frame comes with 3D printed protectors to prevent the capacitor leads from shorting out on the frame. Next, it's time to bust out the soldering iron and solder the capacitor to the ESC. I like that this taker stack has dedicated holes for the capacitor. This way I can solder the capacitor and battery lead separately and not worry about having to do them at the same time. The motor wires hanging around were getting in the way, so I used some cloth electrical tape to secure them to the arms. The Mario 5 frame comes with a hard mounted XT60 connector, so it's time to wire it up. Cut the wires a little long and then solder them to the connector. Mount this in the frame and route them through the channel under the VTX. Now that we know where the wires are going to end up, we can trim them to the exact length and solder them to the ESC. Because of how large this battery connection is, this is going to be the most difficult solder joint to make. I recommend using a large soldering tip to get heat into the joint as fast as possible. Now that we have a battery connector, it's time to hook it up to a smoke stopper to check for shorts. We're all in the clear here. 
Next, it's time to solder up the motor wires. To make the wiring neater, I chose to route most of the wires through the inside of the stack. This is purely an aesthetic choice, so if this is your first build, I'd recommend just doing it the normal way out of the stack. Now it's time to plug in the flight controller and all of the peripherals. The GetBRC receiver comes with a cable that plugs right into the flight controller. For the Rotel 2 camera, the flight controller comes with a cable that will plug right in as well. For the VTX, there isn't a cable that will plug directly in, so instead I took a 6-pin cable that's originally for the DJI O3 Air unit, and then I rearranged the pins on it to match the pinout of the VTX. Rearranging pins is really easy, you just use a knife to remove the pins, and you can put them back in wherever you want. That's all the hard work done, so it's time to tidy up the drone by screwing it all back together, making sure to use thread lock on all the metal screws. For props, I grabbed some generic GemFan 5-inch tri-blade props. And with that, the build is complete. The battery I'm using is a CNHL Speedy Pizza 6S LiPo. For the VTX antenna, I picked up a GetBarC Momoda antenna. The radio I'm using is a Radio Master Pocket, and for analog goggles, I'm using DJI Goggles V2 with an analog adapter. If you want to build this with the DJI O3 Air unit, you can just swap out the analog video components for the O3, and then the O3 will just drop right in. Now it's time for a test flight. The main video feed you're seeing is from a GoPro Hero 10, and at the bottom right is the analog video feed recorded in my goggles. That's what I'm seeing when I'm flying. This flight is my very, very first flight with this drone, so please excuse the bit of boring flying at the start. For our maiden flights, I tend to stay over land and not water in case any screws or wires vibrate loose. There were no issues with this build, so then I started venturing out over the water. The main thing I noticed when flying was just how smooth this thing flew in the air, so I'm coming right off the heels of flying my $300 5-inch drone with iFlight Zing E motors, and there's a huge difference in how smooth the motors spin. These SpeedX motors, they're dynamically balanced at the factory, so they're just butter smooth and there's no vibration or jello in the camera feed. So far, I think these SpeedX motors are the cheapest available that are dynamically balanced, so they're a good value if you want the smoothest possible flights for the lowest cost. Motors that aren't dynamically balanced aren't bad, but they are prone to vibrations and jello, especially at higher throttle values. With how smooth these motors are, I'm really tempted to put a GPS on this build and do some speed runs with it. I do really wish that SpeedyB put a GPS holder 3D print with the Mario 5 frame. I think that if they threw one in the kit, it would be the perfect best value 5 inch frame. For now, I'll have to tinker around to get my 3D printer working again to mount the GPS. The analog video feed coming from the Maten VTX is rock solid. For this flight, I wasn't even running at max power, I was at 1.6 watts instead, and I had no issues. Sometimes you can see some diagonal banding in the analog video feed, but that's been happening with every single analog build I've done, so I think that's on the goggle end. I think I have to swap out one of the receiver antennas or clean out the contacts. Since I don't have a Gemini Express LRS transmitter, I can't really test the Gemini receiver to its full capability, but even with my little Radio Master Pocket with its relatively weak 250 milliwatt output power, I had zero signal issues between me and the drone. Once I do get a Gemini transmitter, I really want to do some extended testing, not necessarily long range, but penetration testing around various objects like walls, buildings, trees, and such. I really do think this is going to be the future of Express LRS since this hardware doesn't really cost that much more than standard Express LRS hardware, so I'm really excited to see how this develops more and its capabilities. So overall, this is one of the best value 5 inch drones you can build since for not a lot of money, you can get very high quality future proof parts. Dynamically balanced motors, solderless flight controller, dual band Gemini receiver, they offer a lot of bang for your buck. Big shout out to GetBRC for providing parts for this build. If you enjoyed this video and aren't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know in the comments.